Hi everyone, today's art journal prompt is Moroccan inspired. Um, it was a, a suggestion um, from the admins in, in the group. I can't remember which one of the ladies suggested it, but um, my inspiration today has come from this elephant, although I don't end up using this, this elephant. Um, this was sent to me for the embellishment challenge and I've got a feeling it was Josie Jitto who, uh, Josie Jitto who sent it to me. Um, it could have been Maria Clegg though, I really can't um, remember. Um, but it just didn't work in the end with my page. I've had a trial run at this and I'll explain um, what I'm going to do in a minute. So let me just put that off to one side. I'm going to be using um, three stencils today. Um, the two folk art stencils let me just get them the right way around um one is called tangier um that's this one here so we've got an elephant we've got um, a sunburst i only use the elephant um on this so oh i'm sorry but he's got substituted for, the, for this one here just because it works better with the with the page um so that one there folk art um charlotte stencil tangier um these are either four pounds or four pounds fifty each from hobbycraft which i think is really really good value for money i've had these for a while um and it wasn't until one of the ladies suggested moroccan theme that i thought oh i know i can do this um the other one is called alibaba um and we've got these small elephants here and then all of these border patterns which I just think are really really pretty um, and then I'm also using this creative expressions mini stencil um, just because it matched the pattern on the elephant here which I was originally going to use now I've made a plan my page is going to be sort of like a, a mosaic and I've cut my usual piece of mixed media paper into these strips here so I've got my um, centerpiece here which um, will house my focal image um, and then these strips here this one here is um, my, my um, page measures seven by seven and a half. This is one and a half um, inches by seven and a half, one inch by five and a half, um, five and a half by four inches, um, five and a half by one inch and five and a half by one and a half inches. So that's how I've broken down um, the pieces for, for my page. And I've made a colour plan of what I'm going to use as well because I've been playing around this afternoon and the hardest thing if you decide to do this is making sure that um, your page is cohesive with, with your colours and, and your layers. So I've made myself a plan um, so that I remember um, what I'm going to do. And this is different to the trial one as well because there were a couple of things that I thought, mm, if I change this, I think it will look better. Um, I haven't trialled this one here, so I'm just keeping my fingers crossed that it works. But I'm going to... Um, do a voiceover through um, the, the, the process now. So let me get some bits and pieces and get myself organised. I decide to add my first layer of white to one of the panels and the reason I'm starting off with the white is that I want to use some bright colours and some distress oxides um, and I don't want to contaminate this piece before I've even started so I decide to get the white um, out of the way first. I give it two coats and dry in between before I add some stenciling using the distress oxide ink in peeled paint. So I align my stencil and um, I just use a piece of cut and dry foam to add my um, Distress Oxide ink. And I'm making sure that I get a nice even coverage. I do two layers and I dry in between each layer just to make sure that it's streak free. Um, so that's the first layer. I take the stencil off, I give it a dry and then I add um, another layer. Then I want to add some clear embossing powder. Um, it just adds such a vibrancy and, and embossing powders just work beautifully with these distress inks as well. So I give it a, a good coat of clear embossing powder, tipping the excess back into the tub so that I don't waste any and then heat setting it with my heat tool. Um, and it just adds such a beautiful vibrancy um, to those pieces. The second panel, um, I want to use some um, primary red. I'm using paint this time, just purely because I don't have a Distress Oxide ink in the correct colour. I've got fired brick, but that's a bit on the brown side, and so I opt for the primary red, which is much brighter. Um, I give it two even coats, just a really thin, even coats, drying in between, just to make sure that that's nice and vibrant. This time I'm coming back in with the other panel in peeled paint again um, and I'm making sure that I go over in nice light layers um, working left to right and in swirly um, motions as well um, just so that I don't end up with any streaks. Um, this has two thin layers um, which are dried in between. 
There we go, I'm dabbing on just to make sure that um, my coverage is, is nice and even. We don't want any streaks with this. And then I give it a good, good dry before I come in with my temple top um, stencil. Now I want to add the primary red um, over that green. And so I use two coats of white gesso first because if I went straight over with the red, it would be sort of like a brick, brick red. So I use two coats of, of white gesso first so that that red, um, by the time I add it, is much more vibrant and I'm drying again in between coats before I come in with that, that red. Um, and again, the red has two coats as well, dry, you know, thin, thin coats, drying in between so that that looks nice and, and vibrant. Being careful, as I say, to use thin coats so that, so that the paint doesn't seep underneath the stencil. And you can see that I'm using masking tape as well just to hold that stencil in place so that it doesn't move around. This time using Wilted Violet um, for the thick um, right hand side panel for, for my page. Um, using swirly movements to pop that ink onto that panel. Again, this has two coats just to make sure that I get a good, even, streak free finish. Um, on the original trial page I did, I spritzed the Distress Oxides with, with water, um, but I decided that um, I like the vibrancy of just having it plain. Now I'm coming over using stencil and using the Broken China Distress Oxide, and you can see that these Distress Oxides just work beautifully on top of one another. I don't need a layer of gesso first, um, they're just vibrant on top of one another, which is why um, I decided to, to use them where I could. Um, again, I um, give one layer, I dry in between, and then I come back over with the second layer before adding some clear embossing powder. Um, now you can see here that I hadn't dried the wilted violet background enough, and so all of that clear powder stuck in all the places where I didn't want it, and it was stuck so much um, that I had to completely wipe everything off with a piece of kitchen towel and start again. And here you can see me using um, a dry cleaning pad just to get rid of any excess bits and any static before I come in with the second layer, which I'm glad to say is much more successful. So I add another layer of that broken china <clears throat> and I dry and then I add a second um, layer and make sure that it's completely dry before I add that clear embossing powder. There you could see me giving the fingers cross crossed motion, <laughs> adding my clear embossing powder for take two. And yes, thumbs up, it's worked. Thank goodness for that. Breathe a big sigh of relief and tipping the excess back into my tub so that I don't waste anything. And you can see here that this just adds so much vibrancy to, to that piece. It um, just really solidifies those gorgeous colors. I want to um, add some white elephants. And my trial piece I used um, stays on opaque and it wasn't quite bright enough. So this time I'm adding the elephants with clear embossing ink. Um, and then I add bright white embossing powder over the, over the top and it just turns out beautifully. You can see again that I held that stencil down with some masking tape to make sure that it didn't, didn't move. And adding my bright white embossing powder over the top um, making sure that um, I use a fine paintbrush in a minute as well to wipe off any extra stray bits that, that really shouldn't be there. Sometimes it just sticks where, where you don't want it. Um, and, and that's quite normal. So just using a fine paintbrush to, to remove those because of course once you've used your heat tool to set this, um, that's it, there's nothing you can do about it. So. Um, tipping the excess back in and then coming over with my heat tool and just look how vibrant this looks. Wow, wow, wow. That's amazing. Just bright, bright white elephants. I just love that. Gorgeous. Great pop of whiteness on that beautiful, vibrant red background and making sure that that's set properly. Then going back over the primary red um, temple tops with some clear embossing ink just because I just want to add that vibrancy um, to those um, temple tops as well. So adding the embossing ink over the top before I add um, some clear embossing powder just to make that red really stand out. And keeping my fingers crossed again <laughs> that I've dried it properly and I don't end up with any un un unwanted powder where I don't want it. And again, great success. I obviously learnt my lesson the first time round. So 
slapping off the excess before I come in with my heat tool just to, to set that. Now I'm adding some broken china to my main focal piece. And again, um, in my trial run, I spritz this with water, um, but this time I'm just using it as a solid, solid colour. Um, using this in circular motions and really concentrating on making sure that I get a good even blend with this. Um, so I add my first layer and try and blend it, blend it in as much as I can. Um, dry it with my heat tool um, before I come in with the second layer. And then I use my Creative Expressions Mini Stencil to add some wilted violet Distress Oxide over the top to create a background. Um, and I just love how this looks. Um, my stencil isn't quite big enough, so I just keep aligning it up and moving it along until the whole of that background um, is filled. So, you know, if your stencil isn't big enough, it really doesn't matter. Just keep shifting it along um, and that will work a treat. Just making sure that, you know, I've got good even coverage. Now I want a platform for my elephant, which is my focal image, to stand on. So I use that vertical um, block stencil and I'm adding some clear embossing ink. Um, and then I nearly make a mistake. I reach for the clear embossing powder before realising my error and coming back in with some of the bright opaque white um, embossing powder. Um, and again, I reach for a small um, paintbrush just to remove the excess drops of, of powder in between those um, strips and heat set with my tool um, and add my elephant on top. So now he's got a nice platform to, to sit on. Now I decide I want my elephant to be black and I originally start off with black stays on ink and it's just not bright enough. Um, or dark enough. So I um, then reach for my Ranger archival ink and that's fine. It might have been that the stays on just wasn't um, wet enough um, and that's perfect. But I still decide that that's not quite bright enough. So um, I realign my stencil over the top and I add a layer of the clear embossing ink before coming back over the top with the clear embossing powder just to really make that elephant stand out and shine. Um, and this is just beautiful and I show you at the end because the original piece um, I did, I just used the um, black archival ink so you'll be able to see the difference that um, that, that makes. Tipping off the, um, e tapping off the excess and then using a paintbrush just to remove any stray bits, um, there weren't many this time, I'd obviously dried it well. Um, and then heat setting and just watch, just oh I just love that, absolutely gorgeous. This elephant just stands out so well on that background. I just love it, perfect. Now I've put all my panels together and I just love how that looks, but I do decide that I want a few extra white bits on the top um, and the right hand side. Um, I've got white everywhere else and I just decide that, you know, I want a bit more white to really make that stand out. Um, so I reach for my Creative Expressions um, stencil again and the clear embossing powder and I'm just going over the top now um, with the bright white embossing powder just to add a, a bit more detail. Right, okay, I'm really happy with that. That just looks so much better. That's made all the difference. And finally, as one last layer, I'm going to be really, really careful. And I thought about adding gold, um, but I just think white will be so much better. And I'm going to outline all the edges with white before I piece it all together. Of course, it's just dawned on me because I'm using um, Distress Oxides, which are water soluble. Um, the white that I'm using is not showing up very clearly. So I'm going to go over the edge really carefully um, with embossing ink. Um, and I'm just going to give this a try just on this one edge just to see um, how this looks and if it works. I think it will. Right, let's just give that a quick dry. I'm just doing this out of shot just for a second so that I don't blow everything around. Perfect, I just love that. So I'm going to do this all around, all of the edges 
of my pages and then I'll assemble it and I'll come back. So here's my finished page. I am just thrilled with how this has turned out. It's not perfect by any means. I mean, I don't know whether you can see here. Um, I had um, a bit of an oops where I smudged it. I'd got um, ink on my fingers from something else um, and of course you know got got some kind of reaction and so I've touched it up as best I can but you know this is is good enough it's a, you know an art journal page for, for heaven's sakes um, and the reason I've used I just want to touch on why I use distress oxides they go really well on top of one one another whereas you could see here when I used the distress oxide and I added the red paint on top I had to block um, the pattern out with gesso first to make the red vibrant when you're using the distress oxide you you just don't have to do that they just work beautifully um, on top of one another so that really made my life easier and the only reason I use paint here um, was because I don't have um, a distress oxide in this color you have the fired brick but that's more of a brown a, a russety brown it wasn't as, as vibrant as I wanted it to be um, the other thing I want to talk about I've used five panels here one two three four five and I've used five different colours as well. I've used green, red, blue, purple and white. And that works really well because um, I've and I added some more of the white down here as well so that I've got white in every single panel. Um, it didn't look right before I added the um, a, a white additions here too. So really, if you want to try this, really think um, and plan out your colours first. Um, let me show you the first attempt I did. This was the first one um, and I hadn't used the clear embossing powder on the elephant and you can see the difference there. I mean, that just makes a whole heap of difference and I'd used white paint um, or in fact in fact I didn't use white paint I used um, a white let me see if I can show you have I got it um, to hand it's um, a pigment ink pad here we go stays on opaque um, but nowhere near as bright as using the white embossing powder so you know you can see that I started off and also I'd only got four panels here and I could see that it just didn't look quite right so I've tweaked it slightly um, you can see as well that um, I used the repeat pattern on the right hand side and I decided that I wanted to introduce something um, bolder um, and this just looks um, a million times better so that was my first attempt I'd also edge this in gold whereas I much prefer um, edging it in white so you know I hope you'll try something similar to this I mean you know Moroccan theme you can do anything you like search Pinterest search the internet look at rugs um, as well um, and fabric because you'll get loads and loads of ideas for pattern and inspiration and you will find as well if you're a bit of a stencil hoarder you don't have to go out and buy um, new ones like like these I bet you a lot of your existing stencils have, have got many of, of the patterns that I've got here and you can also um, print stuff off the internet don't forget um, I mean that was just a mini stencil um, that you know had that Moroccan inspired um, pattern in it so I look forward to seeing what everybody else decides to come up with for um, this week's page um, if you like what I've created here I'd really appreciate it if you would give me a thumbs up because as I always say it just lets YouTube know that you like what I'm doing and let me know what you think in the comments below um, and for anybody who would like to join um, a fun art journaling group I'll leave the link to our Facebook group Art Journal Prompts in the description box below. So take care everyone and I'll see you all again soon. Bye for now.